Greetings everybody, welcome back to the bench, Sam Winters Winters Gunworks here as always. And now we're continuing on with our 9mm 1911 Commander build. And uh, we're getting ready to cut the sights into the slide. Now when I had asked about um, what everybody wanted to see as a part of this series, uh, there were a couple people who, uh, who said, hey, uh, show, show, show me the measurements. Uh, show me how you guys cut sights into, this, uh, into the slide. Show me guys how you do the dovetail. Show me how you measure for that. Uh, it was something that a, a couple people were interested in. So I know that this is going to be a little above and beyond um, most amateur 1911 builders. Uh, but for those of us who have access to milling machines and want to go ahead and save some money by ordering blank slides like this and cut in your own sights, um, this will be good for you if this is your first time doing it and um, you're either reading the print is a little difficult for you or you're just looking uh, for a way to get the perfect fit into your slide. Uh, so with that, uh, I've mentioned it before that uh, I am making the front sight, uh, well the, uh, the front and rear sight for this, for this gun. Um, this is my first time making a full set of sights, first time making a rear sight. Uh, and then I, I've made a couple of front sights before, so this wasn't uh, this wasn't too hard to do. Um, I patterned both of them off the Novak cut, Novak front and Novak rear. So uh, let's let's talk about dovetails in general and sight cuts. We'll start with what we're working with here, and this really is the most common uh, sight cut you see out there, which is the Novak. Um, all Novak cuts are 65 degree dovetails. Okay, so uh, what that means. If you are brand new to this, is every set of sights um, taps into your slide on a dovetail, which is basically um, whatever geometric shape that is. Uh, but it's got angles, right? So these these angles right here, okay, put together is 65 degrees. So really, it's if that intersected up there. Uh, this angle would be 65 degrees, okay? Um, it's not this angle. Not that that matters because when you buy a 65 degree dovetail cutter, um, it, it's set up properly, okay? It's set up right. Okay. Now, a, if you're looking for which uh, dovetail cutter to buy uh, for your Novak, typically they're actually kind of named um, as, well, the, the rear one is. Uh, the Novak front really isn't because there's actually a couple gen there's a couple different generations of Novak fronts. They're all 65 degrees, uh, but I'll get into that in just a second here. We're going to go over the rear. The rear hasn't ever changed. Uh, it's 65 degrees and sharp corner to sharp corner, okay, is right about 495. Okay, um, at least that's that's the cutter you're you're going to buy. Okay, it's going to be 0.495. Uh, that's the one that's going to be advertised as a Novak rear. Um, I want to say according to the print, according to Novak, it's 0.497. That's the actual uh, tip to tip on the corners. Um, but yeah, the, the 495, that's, that's what you're going to see uh, offered. Um, and, and that's typically what you're going to buy if you want to do it in one pass. If you want to use a smaller cutter, uh, to do it in multiple passes, I mean, by all means, go for it. You can definitely do it that way. Uh, it's just a lot easier, I find, if, if you just have the right cutter to, to, to start with, one pass through through the slide, and call it call it good, okay? Um, the current now, front sights. Well, in the, the depth of that, and I'll, I'm, I'm including the depth here because we're, we're going to get into the different, uh, a couple different Novak fronts that are out there. Um, Novak, it's kind of kind of a weird one because front and rear is kind of different. Okay, um, the depth of the dovetail, depending on where you're measuring this thing. Okay, um, 125 thousandths, 0.125, an eighth of an inch deep, and that's from the back. Okay. Uh, the dovetail on the Novak fronts kind of terminates at the front of the, uh, the site itself. It's not like a Bomar uh, where the site continues on forward. Um, it, it terminates at the front, uh, but in the, the front edge, the total front 
height is, is going to be a little bit different. Now, I made this one myself, so it's not, this one isn't really uh, to spec for a true Novak, but I, I cut mine at 220, okay, 0 .220. This one's 0 .219, okay. Uh, but the rear, the rear depth, that's the one you're really paying attention to when you actually go to cut it, is uh, 0 .125, okay, 125,000. Uh, that depth has never changed throughout uh, Novak uh, sites, okay, throughout time. Now, when we get into the front sight, uh, again, 65 degrees, okay, and um, right now, okay, everything Novak has been putting out for quite a while, and I'm not talking like they are, they changed it last year. Um, it's been like this for a long, 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 long time. Okay, sharp corner to sharp corner is .342. Okay, now the dovetail cutter you buy for this is typically going to be uh, a 0 .330. Okay, and so you are gonna have to make multiple passes uh, with this cutter. I, I think I've seen one time a, a .339 um, for this. I think Pacific Tool and Gauge sells it. Um, uh, the, the 330 works j just fine. Um, and that's always, well, the, the, the width has always been there. It, it's the height, uh, that has changed currently. And, and again, when I say currently, I mean, it's been that way for a long, long time. Uh, 75,000, some really old ones you might find out there are 65,000 steep. Okay. Um, see, so yeah, I, I cut this one off the standard pattern at 342 thousandths wide. <clears throat> and uh, 75,000 steep. So, yeah, 75. And I think I cut this one just a hair even wider than that. Oh, nope. Yeah, 341 and a half. I bet if I uh, mic that tomorrow, it'd be 342. But uh, that's okay. Anything over 330 is fine, tip to tip, because uh, the dovetail cutter I use is 330,000. But if I ever wanted to replace this with an actual Novak, uh, front sight, I would I would be able to. Um, <clears throat> this sight is obviously a huge blank. Uh, I left it that way on purpose so that I could uh, trim it uh, to the right height after installing, uh, test firing the gun, and we'll be able to get it to the right size, uh, the right height, and then we'll mill out the the middle of it, drill a one millimeter hole uh, all the way through it for a fiber optic rod, uh, and that'll be super cool. So. Here's a, I think, I don't, I don't think I've shown the, the rear sight really um, since I made it. I think I showed a couple of pictures of it on my Facebook page. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, pre pretty simple. It, it'll just line up with the back edge of the slide like any other normal Novak. Um, and then once I've got it in place, I'm going to tilt the head of my mill and I'm going to come through and angle the back like the, uh, the Novak low mounts. I kind of like that look. So. Um, I'll, I'll do that, but I'll do that once the sight is installed in the gun. That way I can cut it to, uh, oops. That way I can cut it uh, so that it's lined up perfectly, okay. Um, okay, so that's kind of dovetails for Novaks. Um, the other ones that are out there are like your STIs. Uh, those are 330 wide again, 0 .330, but those are 60 degree. Um, and there's there's a there's a bunch of different other like random older ones out there that are like 300 or 295 or um, front front sights kind of bounce around quite a bit depending on the manufacturer. Uh, Kimber's got their own right. Uh, Para Ordnance has their own. Para Ordnance has a bunch. Uh, you really got to be careful if you're if you have Para Ordnance sights that you're cutting in. Um, you, you really got to be careful with those uh, so, and be able to take the right measurements. Uh, th th those are going to go everywhere. Uh, Springfield, Colt, okay, uh, pretty much everybody's got their own kind of style of sight and sight cut that they use. Uh, unless the gun is coming like with Novak sights already put into it or like with uh, an LPA uh, or a Bomar style adjustable rear sight. Uh, that, and those are kind of the only, only other rear sights you're really going to see uh, is well, there, there's four, okay, there's, there's four rear sights uh, that you're going to see in general, and that's uh, your, 
your GI, so your uh, plain Jane uh, GI rear, right? That's kind of like your combat rear sight, okay? Uh, the, the original little blade rear sight with the notch in it, okay? So your GI, that is uh, 60 degree by 360, uh, 0.360 wide. 0.360, okay. Uh, I do not recall the depth on that. Um, we already talked about your Novak, and that is 65 degree by 0.495, okay, ish, right? Don't, don't, uh, don't, don't kill me over that, okay. Uh, your Bomar, and, and I'll say Bomar style, but I'm just gonna say Bomar. Um, Bomar is defunct now, everybody just kind of copies it because it's a great adjustable rear sight. But that is also the same as the GI rear. That is 60 degree by 0 .360, 100,000 steep. And then you have your LPA. And your LPA and your Bomar are your two adjustables. Uh, true, true original target style adjustables. There are adjustable style Novaks now. Um, but, but those didn't come on uh, onto the market until not too long ago, but these are only adjustable, right? These, these are your target style adjustable sites, Bomar and LPA. I would say Bomar is more prevalent than LPA, but your LPAs are still out there for sure. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I, I can't recall the uh, the dovetail measurement for, for that one right now. I've actually never cut one. I always prefer to do the, bo uh, the Bomar. Uh, the Bomar is also called a BMCS uh, and a BMCS2. Uh, but this is your other adjustable uh, style of rear sight, okay? Now let's, <clears throat> now once we do that, a lot better than using the cap to erase that thing, just wipe it off. All right, <clears throat> so once you've got your sights picked out uh, for what you're doing, okay, uh, and you know the, the dimensions, uh, well, how, how, do you, how do you cut them in? Do you just kind of like uh, eyeball that or, or what? Uh, well, if you go to Novax, and we're just going to talk about the Novax here. Um, if you go to Novak.com, okay, you go to their website, they have their print, okay, for their, their sites on their website for you to use. Um, I think there's a couple other websites, like uh, Midway USA has like a thing that uh, shows all the different dimensions for them. Um, I want to say Dawson Precision has the, uh, the prints for how to cut these sites, all right. Uh, but look, the, the best way to do it to get the best fit possible is don't ever assume that your site is cut perfectly to your print, okay? Um, machines make errors, and you, if you try to just cut directly to the print, uh, you, you may get it right, and you may not, okay? So uh, this is how I measure front sights and uh, how I go ahead and set it up on the machine to make a good, a good dovetail cut for the front sight, okay? So we're talking about a Novak, which again, 65 degrees by 0.342 inches wide. Now I'm using a 0.330 wide dovetail cutter. Um, when you get your sights and you measure them across, uh, across the width here and they don't measure 0.342, don't freak out. Uh, most manufacturers uh, chamfer the edge of the dovetails, okay? Um, to get rid of, one, to get rid of any burrs or sharp corners, but then two, to also provide relief to ensure that when you fit the, uh, the sight, you're not fitting it. Uh, just by pressing in the corners of the dovetail, you, you want the friction, the interference to be on the angles of the dovetails. Okay, so that's why they do that. But always know, uh, when you measure the width of this thing, it, it, it may, Come, uh, come to a sharp point, but it probably doesn't uh, for that reason I just talked about, okay? Um, so here we go. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna know, okay, well, am I lining up the front edge of the site to the edge of the slide, yes or no? Okay, in this case, I am. Uh, I always prefer to do that. I think it's a very clean look. So what the first measurement that I'm gonna take is from the edge of the, uh, of the front site to the edge of the, uh, the dovetail. Okay, so we'll do that right here. And that measurement is 79 thousandths. Okay, now I could always just go and look back at the print, okay? Um, 
Now I'm going to go ahead and this is going to be our slide. This will be representative of our slide. And then this will be our site. Okay, I'm just going to... I'm going to do a terrible drawing of, uh, of this front site here. Okay. Oops, <laughs> that doesn't go there. Okay, so from the front edge of the site to the front edge of the dovetail, we have 80 thousandths. All right. Now, I need to figure out what the distance from the front edge to the center of the dovetail is. <clears throat> now, all I need to do is figure out the width of the dovetail, divide by two, and add to the 80 thousandths. So, as we already know, okay, I already uh, showed you the width of this. This is 0 0.342 inches, okay? So, that divided by two, uh, let's see if I can do this in my head real quick, uh, 150 for the 300, 42 divided by two is 21, so 150, uh, 171. Okay, lost the cap there. So, 0.342. Divide by two is going to be 0 0.171. Okay. Um, so now the center line distance of the dovetail that I'm going to cut from the front edge of the slide to the center line of there okay, is simply a matter of now adding 0 0.171 and 0 0.0. 0 0.080. So that's one. 512, boom, 0 0.251 inches, center line, okay? Very important when you're talking about uh, machining and tool widths, uh, you understand are you cutting on the edge of the tool or are you cutting center line of the tool? So in this case, we're cutting center, center line of the tool because it's a dovetail and I'm just gonna run that dovetail cutter straight through that, okay? Now the other measurement we need to know is the depth of the dovetail. And as we already discussed, this is 0 0.075 inches, 75,007 inch depth, very easy to set. Now, in, if, if this is your first time cutting dovetails, uh, something that you're gonna learn quickly, okay, either you're gonna, gonna run your dovetail cutter into your slide and you're gonna break it off or you're gonna heat it up and you're gonna melt, start melting out and deforming your, uh, um, your dovetail cutter there. Uh, if it's carbide, it's just going to... Alright, sorry about that. Uh, the reason I want to know this corner to this corner is because I, I'm not just going to run my, my dovetail cutter straight through that. I'm going to run an end mill uh, center line on this point two five one here and, uh, and hog out as much material uh, as I can. Okay, so let me erase this. Let me... Again, this is our uh, our slide here, okay? Right? So here's our slide. And this is the dovetail that we're going to cut out. So we know that center line distance to the edge of the slide is 0.251. So what we're going to do is we, once we get the slide level down and indicated on the top of the slide, uh, we're going to zero off uh, center line of the spindle to the edge of the slide and we're going to come over 0.251 inches. Since I know that uh, corner to corner on the top of the dovetail is 0 0.300 as we just showed, I'm going to take a quarter inch end mill and at 75 thousandths deep, 0 0.075. Okay, I'm going to take a quarter inch end mill at 0.251, 75,000 step <coughs> depth of cut. Or I'm probably going to take it in, in steps, but I'm going to go down to 75,000 depth of cut uh, right through there and hog it all out. Okay, and hog out as much as I can. Now I know it's 0 0.300, so uh, it being a quarter inch wide, uh, that leaves me what uh, 25,000 on either side. Uh, I'm probably going to take it 20,000 over either side. Um, leave, leave just a little bit and, uh, and again hog out as much material as possible because these dovetail cutters, let me get one here, uh, are, are not strong things, okay? We got a, uh, here, there's a big one. Okay, this is, uh, this is a Novak rear. 
Okay, so this is this is for the Novak rear sight, and uh, this is what they look like. Okay, if you don't have one, uh, this is 65 degrees by 495. Yep, and uh, so this is what we use to cut the rear sight. Now, these tips are are not the strongest thing in the world. If you have a carbide cutter, uh, they are going to be very brittle and very fragile. Uh, if you run that cutter in there too hard or too fast of an RPM, or you try and give it too much of a load, uh, or your anything isn't uh, just cranked down nice and tight and super rigid, and that slide is vibrating around, you're going to destroy that cutter. Um, and that that dovetail cutter probably cost you anywhere from fifty to one hundred and twenty-five dollars, depending on who you bought it from. Okay, uh, high-speed steel maybe not as much, anywhere from twenty-five to fifty bucks probably. Uh, you're going to burn that cutter up. You, you're going to start melting the edges out. I don't mean literally melting, uh, but they're going to start to deform and dull and round over. Um, not, not, and you're going to have a ruined dovetail cutter that's not going to cut anymore. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, hog out as much material as you can. And then come in on that center line at 251, 75,000 stuff to cut. Boom. Run it. And you're going to do a test fit. Now, we know that this is... Uh, that the actual sight is 0.342 wide, and we just cut a dovetail nominally 0.330. Okay, most dovetail cutters are actually slightly undersized uh, for the fact that they know if you're trying to cut in an exact size one pass, you probably want an interference fit, and if they're the uh, the machine, if the machine that's actually making the dovetail cutter is going to have an error in it, they want it to be. Uh, making the dovetail cutter too small because you can always take away more material really well you can add more you can weld it back up I actually just cut one that was a uh, re-welded um, uh, you can always weld it back up but it uh, uh, is preferable not to right um, so sometimes it might be 0.329 or something like that but you're gonna have to take uh, a couple passes here to get out to 342 um, but this is, this is the point that I'm always concerned about. This is what's going to get uh, the front sight lined up perfectly once we get it installed with the edge of the slide and get that nice clean look that you're looking for. Um, so this is the easy one. Uh, now we'll do the more difficult one. Now, for those of you who are astute and uh, are a student of front sight cuts, you also notice that typically there's a flat on uh, uh, underneath that front sight, a very small front uh, flat on the front. Uh, yes, according to the print, you can take a five thousandths deep uh, cut on the top of the slide, and I want to say it's five eighths back. And you cut it 0.625 back, five thousandths deep, just to give a flat for the sight, uh, the bottom of the sight blade to sit against. Uh, so that way it's not a flat trying to sit on top of a rounded surface. Um, I, I'm not gonna do that on here because well, we already have it flattened off. Uh, last time you saw this slide, it didn't look like this. So right now it is tri-topped. Uh, it's got a whole lot of weight taken out of it already. Uh, I didn't show this on, on camera just cause it's honestly kind of boring. Um, all you do is indicate the dang thing level and uh, put it in the jig and just start hacking at it. Uh, so I, I want to say I took about 40 thousandths off the top, flipped it over, but then, you know, about another 40 or so, and then on, you know, another 40 or so on the other side. So you can see I, I've already marked out where we're going to take a huge chunk out of here. Uh, and and uh, I, I'm also not going to actually show cutting the, the dovetails in there because that's just really boring. That's why I got the, the whiteboard here so I can kind of draw out exactly what we're doing. All right, so. Uh, rear sights. This is this one is the one that's a little harder to get right, especially on the Novak, uh, because there's just um, I want to say the the print for it isn't really good, uh, but the the prints that are out there uh, I want to say are ambiguous, okay? Uh, or they say hey if you measure or, or uh, zero on this point. Well, the back of a 1911 slide isn't flat like this. Okay, it's 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 rounded, right? It's rounded forward. Um, so there's no real hard datum line to uh, to to really zero your your mill off of your x-axis or your y-axis, however you got it set up in the mill. So um, we'll draw, we'll draw the back of the slide, and I'll, I'll tell you guys how uh, 
And we'll do the... There we go. This is, this is the back of our slide. Okay, and there's our breach face. All right, and then we'll do... Okay, here's our rear sight. Okay, so like we said before, we've got this measurement. This is 0.4. Nine, five. Well, let's let's take the measurement because I think it's actually four nine seven. Yeah, this one's four nine seven. Uh, I left just a hair of extra meat on there. Okay, so we got uh, point four nine seven inches wide, and our, we already took the measurement here that this is point uh, one two five deep. Okay, now for the rear sight. Since I am concerned with getting the back edge of this rear sight to be uh, touching the rear edge of the back of the slide, okay, that's that's what I want uh, lined up, okay. I want to take a measurement from here, this back edge, just like we did kind of on the front sight, but the reverse. Okay, so I want to take a, a measurement from here to this point here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now there's kind of another, there's kind of two ways to do this, okay? So that's 495. Okay, but uh, if you're kind of clever, you know that there's another way we can do this. Okay, because doing it like this, I've talked about using the depth sticks on these, uh, on these calipers, right? Not the most accurate thing in the world. Well, let's just take an overall length measurement. Let's just see how long it is. Okay, 990. So overall length of this is point 990. We know that this is point from here to here is 497. Why don't we just go ahead and subtract, right? And that'll give you the distance. So let's not just talk about it, let's be about it. Minus point four nine seven eight. That's one. That's nine and four. 491. <clears throat> okay. So here, 0.491, to here, 0.491, okay. <clears throat> Wait, what did, where did that, oh, where did I write that? You guys just, just saw that. <laughs> okay, 497, right? So let's go back and do this, that is three, that is still nine, and that is four. Okay, 493. There we go. Now the math adds up. 493. So why do I, how, how, how do I do this now, okay? Well, same thing. I want to find out center line of the dovetail, uh, but the point I want to find it from is the back edge of the slide. Now there's some prep work we do for this, uh, for this sight cut in the back. The first thing we got to do is come back here and we need to hack out uh, 85 thousandths depth of cut, 675 forward, okay? So we need to cut that out of the way, all right? 85 thousandths depth of cut, all right? Now, if you really wanna find out how, how far forward you can really take that, well, you can take it from the uh, the back of the, the site here and just kind of measure forward till you get into there. I could technically take it all the way to 880 forward. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as, as long as you get the 85 thousands, that's the important part because again, uh, what we're gonna do is get to the center of here and we're gonna do the same thing with a quarter inch end mill. We're just gonna run it through and hog it out. So what is our center uh, what is our center line measurement from our, our datum point here on the site? Well, we got 493 and half of 497. So let's, uh, let's run what 497 divided by 2 is. Uh, 0.49. 
seven divided by two. So we got what, 200, three, five, right? Uh, that's gonna be four, 45, so that's gonna be an eight, and then two, 280, uh, 248.5, okay? That is in between, so 248.5, and uh, we can just cut the five off of there, right? What's, uh, what's half a thousandth between friends? Okay, and then uh, just add the 493. Oops, so now we've got 115, that's four. Carry our one, three, seven point seven four one. Okay, so point seven four one inch. All right, from the back edge to the center line of our dovetail. So what we got to make sure we do here, okay, and this is what I like to do to make sure I can get this measurement right, is before I start hacking this out, I come down my eighty five thousandths. depth of cut with my end mill, with my half inch end mill, and I just touch off while I'm running, okay? I just touch off, and as soon as I touch, I know I'm touching the back, and I'm touching the point in which the back edge here, it, 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 uh, I'm touching the point that I want the back edge of the site to align with. So that's where I'm going to zero my, uh, uh, my digital readout, okay? Or if you, you're going manual on, uh, on your hand wheels, zero your hand wheels, okay? Uh, but zero there, obviously for me, I, I use a half inch cutter when I'm doing this, so I would actually go and make it 250, uh, uh, negative uh, 0.250, and I come over center line of my spindle would then be directly over that point. Um, I want the center line of the spindle aligned to that point right there because I'm gonna run my dovetail cutter through there to align that corner right there to this point on the slide. And that is gonna be my 0 0.741. So once I do that out, I, I'm gonna take my uh, quarter inch end mill again um, at a depth of cut of 0.125, and that is the depth of uh, my dovetail, okay? So at the depth there, at 741, I'm gonna go ahead and run it. Um, as far as the width, a little bit harder to do, but you know it's going to be pretty wide because it is a pretty wide dovetail. Um, but it's a, it's a little trickier because you've got the higher edge up here. The, the dovetail is going to cut anyway. It's going to be higher uh, on the front of the site than in the back of the site. So you, you, it's, it's harder to gauge how much you're doing that. So typically what I do is I just run at the 250 and I, and I call it a day, okay? Um, if you want to get into like a CAD program uh, or draw it out and do the math and you know make make the triangles and do the math I mean by all means go for it uh, I've been doing it this way for for Novaks and haven't had a problem with it okay um, once I do uh, once I hog this out okay at 0 0.741 so we'll just say it's right there 0 0.741 let's tidy this up a little bit Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just hog that out. Once that's hogged out, you come back in with, uh, with this big bad boy, okay, going about 600 RPM, real slow, loaded up with oil, make your pass. Um, now, even though the print says 495 or 497, there's typically a fronting, uh, a fronting pad, a fitting pad on the front of these sites, and it's just a little strip of raised material on the front. That is to ensure that this thing is oversized for the site cut and oversized to the print. Uh, that is what you may want to go ahead and file against. Um, if you have the, the right uh, dovetail file, a 65 degree dovetail file, you can go ahead and start fitting from there, or you can just keep uh, you know, two thousandths at a time, is typically what I like to do on the mill. Um, if it's not fitting, uh, go ahead, you know, run two, you know, another two thousandths. Now I go ahead and, and I keep running uh, one to two thousandths at a time on the mill until I can just stick it in and have it stick. Okay, once, once that site just stays there, not necessarily slides in, but once it just sticks into the slide and it can stay there lined up, 
uh, in the cut. I'm talking maybe it, it goes in maybe like 20 thousandths or something like that. Once it's there, uh, the, the mill gets turned off and the files come out, okay? Uh, probably just gonna take a couple swipes at that point. Uh, maybe just clean off some of the burrs that may be in there um, and you're gonna get it to go, okay? Um, last important thing with cutting a Novak rear. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry, camera thinks I'm boring. Um, this corner right here is not going to be uh, parallel on top. Uh, the, what they want you to do is come back and either cut or file a three degree chamfer on this corner uh, to give a relief. Okay. Now, why would they want you to give? No, it's not going to be like that. A relief. When you press the side in, it's an interference fit, meaning that technically the site is still too big for the slot that you're putting it in, and you're just kind of swaging it in there and cramming it in and making it fit. What that means for the edges here of your dovetails is that they actually get pushed up a little bit, okay? Because remember, your site isn't actually fitting in there. It's just being jammed in there uh, in an interference friction fit. So what they don't want to have happen, uh, again, they, they want uh, the proper way to have this fit in is for the friction, the interference to be on the angles of the dovetail, not on the corners, okay, of the site, which remember, I said that's why they uh, chamfer off the edges here. But when we cut this, we gotta do the same thing. Uh, we have to relieve this corner because when we put it in, this can raise up, kicking our site up and leaving an unsightly gap in the back. And we don't want that, okay? So all you gotta do is take a file. Once you get this cut, all you gotta do is take a file, file it at a slight little angle, and you'll see, you'll be able to see your file marks against the, uh, the, the milling, you know, the milling finish, the finish that uh, your end mill left on there, okay? Uh, eighth of an inch wide is what the print, uh, print says, okay? But as long as you take this off and you give just a hair, hair of a relief, you're doing it right. Okay, we don't really care if this raises up a little bit because it's not interfering into anything. Kind of same with the front sight. Why we don't do that with the front sight? Uh, because there's just a very minimal um, amount of contact between the blade uh, coming over it. So we don't really have to worry about that. Uh, but you can do this with your Bomars too and any other rear sight cut is, is bevel that back edge back down so that it doesn't want to raise up and lift your sight and leave a gap, uh, an unsightly gap. Okay, so that's how we get it all lined up. And uh, if I cut, if everything goes perfectly, uh, the back corner of this site is going to end up right here on the back of the uh, the slide. And your site, well, that's <laughs> again part of my uh, my horrible drawing there. But you get the idea, right? We've all seen uh, we've all seen the Novak site. On a uh, on a slide, so that's how I get them done, and uh, that's how we get them uh, lined up just perfectly. I just posted up uh, a picture of uh, a uh, an old Series 70 Colt I worked on uh, not too long ago, putting in some new sights. You can see uh, using the methods that I use. That one's got a Bomar rear, so you can see how I cut a Bomar on that one. Um, not going to talk about Bomars because that's not how the, we're doing a Novak for this. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can see how I get the front side uh, aligned flush with the edge of the slide, how it just looks super good. Um, obviously, uh, I do, do do this as a service for people. So if you're looking to get rid of your GI sites and you want to get something a little bit more special, hey, hit me up. Um, again, if, if you like what I do and maybe you can't do it yourself, you know, drop me a line and I'll, I'll put some, uh, some sites in your slide and uh, get your gun running nice and good for you, okay? So that was sites for the guys, you know, the two or three of you out there that were interested in measuring your sites, uh, what measurements to take, and how to get that lined up on your mill to do your, uh, your pass. Uh, the only other thing I'll tell you is really, really slow with the dovetail cutters. Uh, again, I go 600 RPM. The feed is really slow. Uh, it might take me two to three minutes to get that dovetail cutter across loaded up with oil. Uh, if you think you're going too fast, you're going too fast. Uh, slow it down, okay? 
uh, hog out the center of that dovetail cut as much as you can to provide as much relief uh, and aid to that dovetail cutter as possible and you'll get it done without breaking your dovetail cutter okay uh, these get expensive after a while so there you go folks a uh, short little episode for you um, uh, about sights and the next time you see this uh, slide it'll have sights in it okay and uh, and then we'll talk about the serrations we're gonna do um, I just got a couple of new really cool cutters in where, where, where are we going? Yeah. All right, I got a box full of goodies. Ah. Brown box of happiness brought me some cool stuff the other day. So we got a we got a, a cool little radius uh, end mill cutter here. I think we're gonna do a chain link pattern on the front strap and the uh, uh, the mainspring housing of our our 1911. I uh, just finished making a brand new uh, checkering jig or uh, for, for the frames so I'm gonna be excited to use that for for this project and uh, anyways we'll, we'll get going on the project we're, we'll get this slide taken uh, care of get some sights in it and always remember guys uh, thanks for joining me reload left freedom ring